All right, it is our third in our series of getting to know the Fight Game Media Network podcasters. We first talked to Scott Edwards, then we talked to Mike Gilbert. Those are all on the Patreon in podcast audio and video form, and as well as on our YouTube channel. And now we're going to talk to Sam Shipman, who co-hosts the Power Bombshells with Mel Gray every Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Sam, what's going on? Hey, how are you? Good. I'm I'm happy that you were able to do this. We were we were able to find some time in between yeah. your wrestling and your baseball and <laughs> your life stuff, so that it works out that we can record here. Yeah. Um, so before we even get started, where are you writing these days? Um, Daily DDT is still the main place where I write. Um, I do I do some off like opinion stuff there, but I mostly do right now do ROH coverage and rampage coverage um and then i'm also writing for sc scoops Mm -hmm. um as well i do that uh during dynamite actually on the weekends just basically there's different little shifts that i cover um for them and then i actually write i've only written one article so far but there is um, some friends of mine have a website called um let them wrestle And so I've written one article for them. I actually have an idea I've been kicking around for them for a while. I just have to find the time to write the article, but I have something I want to do. I think it would be a good place to, to write for, for them. And so those are the, the three that I'm at, but mainly it's daily DDT and SE scoops. And didn't uh, Zach Hadorn just join SE scoops? Yep. He just joined as a managing editor and I believe he starts tomorrow actually. Awesome. I love that guy. Yeah, I don't know him super well, but we do follow each other and he seems like a really awesome guy. So I'm getting I'm looking forward to getting to know him better. All right. So as we've done with all of these, the idea is to get to know Sam a little bit more beyond her podcast on this network, as well as beyond wrestling a little bit, too, because the one thing that Sam and I share is a fandom for our baseball teams. If you follow Sam on Twitter, you'll notice uh, during the Braves game, she's going to live tweet her thoughts on, on what's going on with the game. Uh, very similarly to how she live tweets the wrestling stuff and <laughs> the Tony yes. Khan press conference call and, and everything that, that <laughs> she covers. So uh, let's not even start with wrestling. Let's start with baseball. Where does okay. the love of baseball come from? Um, it actually comes from my grandfather. Uh, when I was really young, um, he, I would go over and my cousin, uh, she and I are about, I think we are 13 months apart. No, maybe a little bit, maybe 14 months apart. So she and I are really close. Uh, my grandparents raised her. And so I would go over to hang out with her. I mean, we were very young. Uh, this is like when Del Murphy was playing. <laughs> and Dale so, Murphy, wow. Yeah. And so he would always call us into the room when Del Murphy was on the TV. For whatever reason, we decided we would kiss the TV every time he <laughs> was there. So <laughs> Del Murphy was my first favorite player. And then I actually like really got into baseball um, when in the summer of 96. So I missed them in the world series in 95 because I wasn't into baseball. And then I went to stay with my, my grandparents live in the same city. And, but I ended up staying with them almost the entire summer, basically because I was staying with my cousin. Mm -hmm. And so she and myself, my grandpa would watch the Braves games all the time. And then it just stuck. And I haven't stopped watching since then. And cause that's, is that technically your local team? Cause there's not a major league team in your, in your city. Right. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's why my grand my grandpa was from Brunswick, Georgia. Um, And then he started watching. I believe he had told me in the past that because his favorite players were Willie Mays and Hank Aaron. And so I think he kind of because we could get the Braves game because obviously we were in TBS country. So (laughs) so he kind of watched the Braves more. And then. That's how, you know, that's how he, we got stuck on him. And we do have a minor league team. The Charlotte Knights are here. Um, they have a beautiful stadium um, uptown. And so they're a White Sox affiliate. And so I've seen some players come through. Like I got to see Yon, Yon Mankata a lot before he got called up. Um, he was playing when I was going to games. Not often, but I would go to maybe five or six a season. Um, Charlotte is always sort of been talked about as a major league city for expansion, right? 
Yeah, they have been. And then because they ended up before the national, well, before the Expos went to D.C. and became the Nationals, like Charlotte was one of the places I think that they had talked about coming. And then uh, and then uh, the Knights were in Fort Mill, South Carolina, which is they were still the Charlotte Knights, but they were in Fort Mill, which is like right over the state line in South Carolina. And so George Shin, who used to own the Hornets, (laughs) uh, the Charlotte Hornets, he moved them down there and it became this whole thing and he tried to, so they were there. I want to say they were there for like 12 seasons or something like that. And then they've been back in Charlotte probably six seasons now, I want to say. So if you were to, if you had a choice, let's say the Braves are playing an important game on uh, Wednesday night at five at 8 PM and dynamite was on at the same time. <laughs> Are you flipping back and forth? Are you focusing on one and DVRing the other? This, how do you record? Or how do this you? This is how me. Do you this it? is me every Wednesday because the Braves, <laughs> the Braves play generally at seven twenty p.m. unless they're out on the West Coast. Um, <laughs> so I usually would watch on my iPad. I would have the Braves game on, and then I would have the then I'd have wrestling on TV. But my iPad is old, and I only use it for for Braves games. Mm-hmm. And it crapped out like three weeks ago. So I've been watching I've been watching Braves games on my phone because I can I have the Direct TV app. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I just watch them. I have a little I watch it in a tiny little square that way I can still tweet at, at, <laughs> if I need to. Right, but right. Yeah. Usually wrestling still takes the the they get my attention when it's on, but the Braves are always, they're always on. <laughs> okay. Well, they're what, currently on right now. <laughs> but, but what happens if the playoffs come around? That's a really hard question. I would probably, if it's playoffs, I'm going to watch playoffs and then I will probably, I would probably just DVR wrestling and then try to stay off of wrestling Twitter. I would just stay <laughs> on my page where I'm not seeing anything else except for just my own tweets. Cause that's what I've had to do to avoid certain, like even yes, when it, cause it's so hard to obviously to, uh, to miss spoilers and things like that. And so that way I can't not be on the app because I just, I'm that addicted to it, <laughs> especially for an app that it ended up being my favorite app. And it was an app that I didn't even want to get on, to, but I had to for, co- for a college course I was taking. And then here I am like 13 years later. <laughs> yeah. are, are, do you think threads has a shot at all? Um, Potentially I am holding out on it just because um, I want to try to keep that separate from Twitter just because I have a lot of wrestling stuff on Twitter, which is fine. I just want to keep some of my, as much as I can keep things per, like personal and private, I would yeah. like to keep them separate. Yeah, like yeah, my yeah. Instagram has been private for years. My Facebook is private, but I don't want to have that overlap if I can help it. And it sounds like with threads, they link all three of them together. And I'm a little hesitant until I see how things play out right? and how I can, if I can keep them separated. I mean, I've somebody has suggested maybe starting a like a new Instagram account that I could be that would be associated with like I guess like my writing stuff and mm-hmm. then associating a threads account with that and maybe trying that way to keep it separated from personal stuff so that's definitely something I'll look into but I don't as much as I don't like a lot of things about Twitter I don't have any plans to leave right now because it doesn't seem like there's a it seems like all the alternatives have some sort of giant issue so <laughs> yeah for me it, it is literally if twitter just dies and <laughs> i just want to have something, <laughs> something to move everything over to but uh threads you're not missing anything yet like there like there are people trying you could tell there are some people trying to uh get things i know brian alvarez i think last week went threads only like he didn't even use oh, wow. twitter for the week i think he like went threads only but the you know the eyeballs are still on Twitter, and as long as the eyeballs are on Twitter, then that's where people are going to be, and that's where people are going to want to post. Especially right. with the because Threads doesn't even have a desktop uh, way or, or, right. or a website way yet to post. So right, uh, you have to con- you have to be on your phone to 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 post to, to Threads. So yeah, and I opened up Blue Sky the other day too. Someone gave me an invite. Mm, there's nothing going on over there. <laughs> yeah. I was like I was like oh this is cool, but again it's kind of like a backup. Like if something goes wrong with Twitter and you know, Musk has to shut it down, then, you know, at least we have a, a spot. To right. Go and I have like a, I have a, when all this stuff started, like when he first 
took over and they were like people were getting fired left and right we weren't sure if the app was going to exist overnight <laughs> i made a link tree and just like linked my daily ddt messy scoops i linked uh the youtube page here so that if something happened i was yeah. like well at least all of my i probably need to get around to getting like an actual website and putting my work on there but then i was like well at least if twitter disappears then i at least have this link and everybody can find my work still and it's updated in real time so i at least have that you know on our website or the fight game media website which i'm revamping i do want to create more of a presence for authors and to show what authors are doing so maybe we can do something there too that would be cool uh all right let's let's dig in a little bit more to the wrestling okay. side of things because uh, i'm always fascinated what folks is uh in was in wrestling um i i know mike gilbert's in was somehow some way his family was watching wrestlemania 3 hogan and andre <laughs> which was a giant thing back then. Right. It was like a pop, almost not quite a pop culture thing, but it was as, as close as you were going to come. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, and then you learn Scott Edwards is like, oh yeah, it's like a CM Punk and John Cena match. So it's like a wide scope of yeah. the time frame, right? Because Scott's right. so young. But yeah, where, where do you come young in? He was I didn't realize that interview. either. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, wait, he's how old? <laughs> I'm like, you know that you and my kid are the same age, right, Scott? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but what about you? Where, where, where do you come in? Where does wrestling come into your life? Yeah, it's again, it started like when I was younger where I didn't like watch all the time. I just have memories of big boss man. Oh, there and you go. That Cobb I know, County, Georgia. Yeah. And so uh, the same cousin that she and I watched baseball together and she, um, we were younger and we would be like at the grocery store walking down the aisles, just like doing our arms out and like talking like big boss man i don't know why this was the thing we did and then i didn't like my dad would he was he would watch wrestling like some he wasn't like there would be weeks like especially in the night like he was a really big stone cold fan and he liked the rock so we would watch like all the time during that but i didn't start so the same year that i was got into baseball again is when i started getting into wrestling again because my cousin and my grandpa <laughs> were watching WCW. I did not watch. I was like, she, my cousin was like, you cannot like WWF and <laughs> WCW. You cannot be. And by that point, NWO was involved. So it was NWO, WCW. Right, right, right. And she was like, WWE is not allowed. So I don't think I watched WWE for like another two or three years after that. And that and so, makes sense from where, where your region is, right? Yeah. Like that's WCW country. It is. Yeah, it is WCW country. So that's, that's what we watched. And like we would, it was back when like they would, it would come on at eight o'clock and it would repeat at like one o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. Mm -hmm. So it was the summertime. And so we would go like my grandparents had like she had a TV in her room, but then my grandparents had a little tiny TV on top of the refrigerator. So we would like go get snacks and we would like one of us would sit on the counter and the other one would sit on top of the washing machine and we would like watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> and so like for the longest time, I thought Goldberg streak was real. I did not know that they were, I didn't know they were padding his numbers. Like I thought because there's house shows and things I, I just assumed this man was out here <laughs> winning all the these first, matches. The first streak was real, wasn't it? Like I think it, so. But the second one, or there was one with Sid Vicious as well, where they like they completely padded it for sure. Yeah. So. Yes. So there was a while. And then yeah, and I was a really big fan of Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. I was a, I really I was definitely NWO. Uh red and black was my preference. Wolfpack. <laughs> yes, Wolfpack. Definitely a big Wolfpack fan. No, that's uh, I mean, you're that's right smack dab in the middle of the most popular time. Right. It, which yeah. Is, you know, because it, the waves of when people come in obviously has a lot to do with where where you were born and, and when mm -hmm. you were born. And because, you know, my my reference time is mid 80s mm -hmm. um, where they take off and then other people uh, come in, you know, maybe during the early 90s. And then but I would assume that that late mid to late 90s period is another time frame where a giant amount of wrestling fans are created yeah i would say so because especially like when i was going into high school like 
I was like one of the, well, there's a there was like one or two other girls who watch wrestling, but it was mostly guys that watch wrestling. And like I had a guy that was one of my classmates, and like that's what we talked about every every time we saw each other like that. We just talked about wrestling, and then he tried to convince me to watch ECW, and I would not watch it because I was just like, ah, oh, that's too much yeah. blood for me. And then now I watch death matches. And, <laughs> like that. and I watch <laughs> and I watch GCW on a regular basis and things like that. So that's I guess hilarious. I'm getting more open to some of the things that I'm saying. I mean, it still makes me there are certain things that still make me squirm and things like that. But yeah, teenage me would be like, what in the world are you doing? Because I just would not I refuse to watch ECW. I was like, there's no way I'm tuning into that. <laughs> Th that's actually really interesting because now, I'm not saying that, you know, if you are looking for an opportunity to communicate with the opposite sex, <laughs> one way for women to do so is to watch things that a lot of guys watch. So if it's basketball right. or baseball, in your case, wrestling for yeah. me as well, my sister and, and her friend and my mom, they would watch uh, Beverly Hills 90210. And then I would kind of be watching on the side. <laughs> And then they came in for the summer season in season two. Right. And I was like, oh, like all these people are like in bikinis and stuff. And like, <laughs> this is kind of cool. And so then I get sucked into the soap opera aspect of right. it. So that was a way for me to actually communicate with, uh, you know, with girls my age was like, oh, yeah, watch 902. And oh, I know what's right. going on in those. So that's it. Yeah, I had to, I had to wear my Luke Perry shirt just because I knew I was going to be on your show. So yes. I was like, I have to I have to wear the Luke Perry shirt. <laughs> yes, I love that. I love that Luke Perry shirt. Um. So now, you know, you start and what what do you think? Like, because obviously the this the time in which you started watching it was also just a time to hang out with your cousin. Like that was also. Yeah. So you're a much different fan now than you were when you started. Yeah. When did you start to see that hook? When, when did you see that change of where you went from sort of like a casual fan to like this? crazy hardcore fan i don't you know that's a really good question i really don't know when that was because i i would say i mean i did start watching wwe and i well wwf at the time and then um like of course we were because of where we are we were huge hardy boys fans my sister and i are still huge hardy course, boys fans <laughs> yeah we're we're both still really big fans of theirs and so it was that and then like so i had a friend um in high school and she would she heard her boyfriend would rent like WrestleMania. And so I went over and watched WrestleMania and I think it, oh, I, I know for sure. One of the ones I watched was the one where it was the Hardys versus edge and Christian versus the Dudleys. Mm -hmm. And so that's like when I got really into, like, I still love tag team wrestling and that's why I got, I was, I love tag team wrestling and I loved watching those three uh, teams. And so that, I guess maybe that's when just because, and then it got to be where like, well, you have to see what's coming next week. Like, so then we wouldn't like, we would not miss episodes. <laughs> then we were like, um, and then thankfully the DVR came along. And so we could record things if we weren't yeah. going to be home, <laughs> things like that. And then even like when we would go to shows, like we would record it so that we could come back and like rewatch things mm -hmm. or depending on where we were to see if we could see ourselves or see oh, our friends. Course, course. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I guess it was probably, I guess it was probably early 2000s where is where we my sister and I really got into it. my cousin kind of got where she wasn't watching it she doesn't watch it now but my sister and I watch all the time we my like my dad will occasionally watch stuff like when we tell him about things but it's, it's my sister and then we found like a group of friends we started going to indie shows and so we had a local promotion that ran like we went we started going like 11 years ago uh, I want to say, and it was funny because I met, we went to see, uh, we went to see Mick Foley was doing a stand up thing and it was a few months after Hurricane Helms was in that really bad motorcycle accident. Oh, yeah, and yeah. so the it ended up being a charity show where the funds went to to him. And so he brought in like Edge was there and um, I'm trying to remember, it was like Gunner and there were several other people and so like they signed autographs afterwards like i got to meet edge um and i met some other people and then um, there were some local wrestlers who they are and they were passing out flyers for an upcoming show and we were like oh cool we'll check this out and then i think we ended up not going to the next show but then we went like a few months later and it was like in a rec center 
we paid like five bucks. <laughs> and, <that's, laughs> and so like I saw them. And so it actually the guys that ended up being and some people who will probably know who these are. So one of them was Jake Manning, mm. uh, who was the man scout. And then the other ones are Zane, um, Zane Riley and Caleb Conley, who are the revolt. Um, and so they ended up, that's how that was kind of, we had gone to like a couple of little indie things here, but that was like the, our first introduction to PWX. And like, so I got to see Cedric Alexander, like at the very beginning of his career, I was paying like $5 to see him. His family would come and they would get super into it. Like one night they were like throwing chairs. Like it ended up being like a whole thing. It was like, my sister and I were like, what in the world is happening? But <laughs> then we ended up coming. And so, yeah, we were going there. And so we met friends through that. And then like, that's who, like, we were all in a group chat and we all talk about, we all watch AW together and we watch, uh, most of us watch new Japan. So we were like in a group text. So we talk about wrestling like pretty much every single day. <laughs> what does your dad think of the wrestling fandom? uh he about he just is like i guess as long as like my sister and i are, are into it he doesn't mm -hmm. care like he's just like like we'll tell him some things and he'll just be like this is and so like we'll tell it like he knows like all about the speaking out stuff like because i was telling him because i covered that so like he yeah. knows like that side of stuff because otherwise he would have no clue um but he just yeah he's just like if you like it then i you know and then so he'll ask it like he knows that we'll go to indie shows and so we'll tell him like hey there's this indie show that's at a bar like by your house or something like that and he'll be like oh, okay have fun and then like and he'll ask us like about it and stuff like that but he's not but yeah he's just like and my mom didn't get it for a long time and she's just like okay <laughs> she was like you clearly really enjoy it she was like now you write about it and you have a podcast about it so she was like i mean as long as it makes you happy <laughs> um my dad so when i was growing up he i mean he essentially told me it was fake pretty much from day one and the reason why because he was a fan and uh, i've talked about this with with uh, dave Meltzer, but my dad was a fan of a wrestler called pepper gomez mm -hmm. and pepper gomez in the bay area was a real real big fan favorite and my dad was a big fan of his and stopped watching wrestling because now he says it was Ray Stevens. Dave Meltzer says it could have been Ray Stevens or Pat Patterson, but there was a thing where Pepper Gomez had the this the abs, like he had the stomach of stone. Nobody could like hurt his his stomach because it was right. so at so, so so many abs and tight and muscles. <laughs> and so he was a tag team partner with one of these two guys. And the gig was well, they will drop a knee from the top rope on the stomach to show how strong Pepper's stomach is. And my dad was like, this is the dumbest thing. They're just going <laughs> to drop it on your face. And then they did. Cause that's the beginning of the angle. And then he was like, no, this is too stupid. I'm out. Um, so that, you know, that's kind of his mentality of pro wrestling. And then when I get into it, he, he was fine with me watching it and I would rent all the tapes and stuff. And, uh, but he told me like literally from day one, like, yeah, like just understand that this is not real. <laughs> like it's fake. So that, that's right. my mentality from watching this stuff, probably since I was about seven or eight years old. Oh, wow. Uh, so then, uh, the Friday main event, Hulk Hogan against Andre the giant. And I figured this out cause this was a giant mystery to me, uh, a local San Jose Mercury news sports writer that Friday morning had the entire angle in the newspaper. It's going to be <laughs> twin refs. Hogan is going to get screwed. Andre wins the title. So he had the whole thing mapped out. So I go to school on Friday and I tell everybody, here's what's going to happen. So come <laughs> Monday, I'm like Nostradamus, right? Because I right. knew what, what happened. And so even when that entire thing happened, and I knew it from soup to nuts, after it happened, I was like super bummed. And my dad was like, you knew what was going to happen. Like, how could you be mad? <laughs> and I was like, you know, it was one of the, my very first. Yeah, but still moments, you know. Right. Yeah. So w I, when I realized uh, that the local sports writer was probably not the giant wrestling fan, I was like, <laughs> gosh, you know, I put two and two together. Like he had to have talked to Meltzer to understand <laughs> what was going on. And so when I first met Meltzer, I kind of asked him about it. He didn't really remember. But I, then I, um, one of the observers went up from 1988. Uh -huh. And it was the observer 
right before this moment happened. And so I got that. And then I found the local article on it. And and, it, and then I refreshed Dave's memory. And he's like, oh, yeah, I know who that guy is. And I probably told him. So, yeah, Dave, <laughs> Dave Meltzer scooped the sports writer who had the entire storyline on uh, on Hogan That's losing fantastic. to Andre. So that was like my introduction into this world that we now live in. With right. Wrestling. Yeah. Uh, all right. So now uh, you become a, a big fan. Where does the writing piece of it come in? The content creation piece. Were you always a, a writer in a sense? Yeah, I was all yeah, always have been a writer. Um, I went to um I have a degree in journalism. Um, so I've always written. I didn't ever think about writing about wrestling. It just wasn't something I ever really thought about. And like for a while I thought maybe I'd be a sports writer, but then I heard too many people say that they got to the point where like they hated the sport they covered. And I was like, well, I don't want to ever hate baseball. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, so then I kind of and then at that time, like when I was in college, like obviously newspapers were declining and things like that. And I was like, it's going to be hard to find a job. And like, so I kind of just didn't really think I never wrestling writing, never crossed my mind. And then, um, a friend of mine who I actually met through brave Twitter, <laughs> and then she's also a really big wrestling fan. Uh, she grew and she's from, from Atlanta. So she grew up during all of that time too. Um, and so we actually had gone to, uh, we had gone to all in together it was, uh, my sister and her and myself and, uh, her now husband and some other friends, we were able to score tickets to all in and wow. Yeah, I don't know how that happened, but we thought they it, the stars aligned and we were able to all go. Um, and so, like, my friends, so it was me and my sister, obviously, here in Charlotte, friends from Atlanta, and then friends from Tennessee. And then we all just kind of, um, we all we stayed in a hotel together and we went to all the shows, or we went to the show and went to Starcast stuff together. And how to and then I still was not even contemplating it. And then my friend um in Atlanta, she saw um Andrea Hanks had posted um for fan side that she was looking for writers and she was like, I think you'd be really good about this. She's like, You you tweet about wrestling already. She's like, We talk about it. She was like, You know a lot of stuff about it. She was like, I think you would be really good. And so I was just like, so I thought about it for a couple of days and I was like, you know what? I'll just and then you know i'll just reach out to andrea and see what happens and so i started in july of 2019 was it 2019 no 2020 i think it was 2020 and so i started and so like i covered um i covered 205 live which I love. Like I was a huge 205 Live. I will still die on the hill that at <laughs> one point 205 Live was the best thing that WWE was doing. It was the best wrestling, best storytelling, best everything. Like I loved 205 Live. So I covered that, was covering some stuff for BTE. And then I was covering the beginning of the Wednesday Night Wars. Um, I started covering that. And then fans had decided they didn't care about wrestling. They weren't going to cover it. I remember when this happened. Yeah. And so um, they let my editor go. And actually through Fansided is how I met JD because JD was writing for Fansided at yep. the time. And so yep. that's how, yep, that's how we met. And so I, um, so I was trying to figure out, I was like, well, where am I going to start writing? I got to figure out something like I'm not getting any views. There's no like, because Andrea was really great as far as like she created like this vertical. We always had topics to write about. After she left, when they told her there wasn't going to be more wrestling writing, I was like, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm just talking to myself. Like, <laughs> there's JD had left at that point. And so um, I looked into moving over to, they were like, well, Daily DDT is, you know, part of Fan Sided. They cover wrestling. If you want us to get you in contact with people over there, we'll do that. So I moved over. So I joked that I, I was like, well, I can't say I jump ship because they're with the same company. So I moved <laughs> from, so I joked that I moved from Evolve to NXT. <laughs> <laughs> so um and so that's how i ended up there and so i yeah and so i write um still very consistently for them i write for them at least twice a week um and i was doing a lot of i did do like in the beginning i did do some interviews like i've interviewed um a, a few people but it just uh because the way that daily ddt runs things which is not there it's basically how fan-sided because it's like a 
the pay-per-view basically Mm -hmm. type of thing. So I would put all this work and effort into doing the interviews. Like I would come up with questions, do my research, conduct the interviews, transcribe all of it. And then I would get like, I would barely make a thousand views. And I was like, this is just a, I was like, on the one hand, it's great because it gives me experience and things like that. But on the other hand, I was like, I work a full-time job. Like this is, I was like, it's beginning. It's a, it's not worth the hassle of it. And so I quit doing interviews just because it was like, it's just not worth, if I was, if I was doing this full-time that I would probably go back to it. But I was like, this is not even my day job. So it's like, I can't put all that effort into it. Yeah, that is an issue um, with wrestling websites, I think. And, you know, a lot of it is based on, you know, search index and keywords and how, you know, there are certain wrestling websites, which I don't think are fantastic, but they're good at the Google stuff. And so they get ranked very highly. Yeah. Uh, And, you know, that's really the key. If you rank very highly then it doesn't really matter how, what the quality is, you know, as long as, as long as you get those views and and that, you know, people are searching for stuff and Google is still such a a key driver of of traffic. Um, But at the same time, you know, you think of the internet and you go, wow, just endless distribution. Right. And, And really the way that people use the internet is, you know, very sort of predictive and, uh, process and kind of behavioral and it's not really this endless amount of distribution you know you really have to focus people and have them Mm -hmm. click here to go to this thing and every everybody is just so you know because we have so many different sources of information coming from everywhere you talk about twitter um yeah you know discord uh youtube will send you notifications uh, I know Apple News has been sending me notifications and I click on something and I get, you know, so many different emails from Substacks right. and stuff. And you really have it really becomes like, how do you become a priority in somebody's life? Yeah. And that's really hard. And, you know, so the so much competition in, in this wrestling mm-hmm. arena, though, yeah, I did talk to somebody. I think it was John Alba. And he was like, yeah, you know, it is kind of competitive in wrestling, but it's like nowhere near as competitive in like other sports. Oh, yeah, just, definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but it, I mean, it is, it is, it was a fun exercise. I learned a lot when I was looking for more writing on the website because I was just like, you know, I just want to see, we have time. People are home. It's the pandemic. Yeah. Let's try some stuff. And, you know, we were able to do it for a little while and I just, we couldn't move, you know, in that kind of experiment, you want to move the page views like right. 10x or 20x <laughs> right and like right. i was i was able to move we were able to move them like you know 2x maybe a little bit more sometimes yeah. and and but that that was really it so it just it was like okay this is just too hard we're we're not indexing as well as we could and it would probably take so much more time and effort to do that and you need experts and you need people who are do this right. for a living and so mm-hmm. but it was but it was a fun exercise for me because like okay you know, what works, what doesn't. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you know, from a talent perspective, like the people who we had writing you and, and, and JD and Justin Nipper and and people who are very high quality writers. And it was like, cool. It was great. I liked the idea of saying this person is so good. You should come read them. But at the end of the day, it's really, how do you get into their, you know, into their daily habits? And and yeah, that's really hard. And one, and another thing that I got a quick, like, lesson in is twitter engagement it does not always relate it doesn't always like relate itself to to views because there was one article i wrote about i think it was about sasha banks and i got a ton of engagement like a lot of people said some really positive things so but they were like i guess basing it off the headline and what (laughs) people were saying because i was like wow i've not ever had this much interaction on twitter before and then like i went the next day to go look at my views and they were like nothing and i was like are you kidding me? And so I was like talking to my editor and he's like, well, Twitter's not real. I mean, it is, but it's like, he was like, it's, a, he was like, it's a good place for conversation, but you have to get people to click on it and leave the app. And he was like, most, Twi- most people on Twitter don't use Twitter like you. And I, like I use Twitter and I read articles on Twitter all mm-hmm. the time. I, I always have, I still do, but he was like, most people don't get on Twitter to read. They get on Twitter to just like kind of engage and things like that, but they don't get on there to like 
learn or to go like actually read things. And he was like, so, um, so yeah, I got a really big lesson that, and so I had to remind myself of that sometimes. I'm like, just because all this engagement is happening here on Twitter does not mean that it's happening <laughs> on my actual articles. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Uh, when it comes to current professional wrestling, which you are watching a ton of, yes. uh, now we have uh, even more AEW on Saturday. I think that's going to be a hard one, you know, because we were just talking about fitting it in people's sort of rhythm and process of their daily. Now, you know, talk about Tony Khan's big uh, puzzle uh, of trying to figure out, OK, like, here's the weekend. Like, how do we get a weekend you know, people, yeah. people who are generally doing stuff on the weekend mm -hmm. to now watch two more hours of wrestling. Uh, where are you with your current number of hours that you watch versus <laughs> how many hours you want to watch? Because <laughs> I'm I feel overloaded. And yeah. uh, it's going to be hard to keep up, I think. It's a it's a lot. Um, I watch. So I watch all AEW programming, including including Collision. I'm not co currently covering Collision, but my sister had back surgery almost three weeks ago so she can't really go out and do anything so we've been home watching collision because we she's like i can't like she's not at a place yet where she can she can stay out for long periods of times and things like Back that so, surgery which yeah did she, did she take a bad bump like how did she get hurt she, she did well she had back surgery the first time in january of 2020 and she had it on the left side um and it was she's got some issues with her l4 and l5 and so um they did um oh, why did i just forgot the name of the surgery and i should know because i've only heard it 28 times but <laughs> she so she had that surgery it seemed to be okay she had two falls and just my sister's not a clumsy person but she just had two she had two really bad falls um one of them we were just walking through the backyard with our dog it had been raining and she slipped on wet leaves and she just fell a certain way that it just like gave her discs she oh. had some disc issues and so she was in physical therapy for probably close to a year and then earlier this year she started having really bad leg pain um and it turns out the disc was pressing on a nerve um and so they did the same procedure except on the right side this time and they trimmed back some of the disc and then she's so it's not pressing on her nerve any anymore and so she's feeling a lot more relief from it and so they're gonna uh in a couple of weeks or no i think in six weeks they want her to start physical therapy because they want her to do some core strengthening they're like that should help you not fall down so many times so much <laughs> so um but yeah so she had surgery uh almost three weeks ago and so we were like well guess we're gonna be watching collision for <laughs> live for for a while until you know she can start going out again well i guess it is nice <laughs> of tony khan to have put <laughs> yeah, on this so he, yeah well, and if he had not been there then i'm sure that's you know we watch so yeah so we watch uh all of aw um i do watch roh because i cover it i would probably watch roh anyway even though they have not they've the last few weeks have not been as cohesive and things like that because collision is the new yeah. that's where all his, his focus is he's got to delegate some things for roh to be i think he can fix the problems if he just does it now but he's got a really busy summer so we watch those uh we do not watch wwe at all um i quit watching i quit watching for sure i guess uh 2021 i think and then like where i was watching on a weekly basis i stopped watching nxt after John, the week after Johnny Gargano left, because mm -hmm. um, I was like, nope. And I was like, NXT Black and Gold is dead. Two point <laughs> is not for me. <laughs> so Two point is not great, though. People do no. like the campiness of it. Uh, yeah, and so I, I mean, we did. I did come back and watch some stuff. Like I watched like Cody return i did watch royal rumble i watched wrestlemania and then those i was really disappointed i hated the thing the stuff that they did with cody and how they didn't and i was like no nope. and then i watched the the only reason i watched the raw after mania is because i was like on the off chance that jay white is actually gonna show mm, up oh, i didn't yeah. i was like bracing i was like i really don't think he's coming to <laughs> wwe but i was trying to brace myself for the fact that might be where he ends up and then when he did not come that night and then he showed up like on in AEW. i was like all right good i'm done i don't have to watch this anymore <laughs> I was like uh, so i don't watch that at all but we do uh i do watch gcw not every single show but i 
because I have the I have Fight TV Plus and I got the introductory like four ninety nine price, mm-hmm. and so I got grandfathered in. With oh that. wow! So, yeah, so I pay five bucks a month and I have access to all kinds of stuff, which is how it was super helpful when I was watching a lot of the uh, collective stuff back in Mania. Like I watched a ton of that. Um, there's still like three shows that I need to go back and watch, but um, and then I watch New Japan. I don't. Um, I don't watch a lot of the road twos things just because there's not enough time for me to do that. So are um, you watching G1? I am going to watch G1. I am. We haven't started it yet. We knew over the weekend that we were not going to get to it. And we had planned to start last night. But for some reason, I can't get G1 in the living room. And we have to our G1 uh, New Japan World in the living room. So we either have to watch on my laptop or in my sister's room. And Nikki was having some discomfort last night so we were like you know what we'll stay in here and so we watched gcw forever (laughs) last night and so i got to see um what we watched everything but the main event but i got to see speedball mike bailey wrestle yoshihiko and they did a tribute to omega osprey 2 and it was one of the most incredible things i have ever seen (laughs) so it was great um but yeah so we i watch a lot of wrestling and then for a while i was watching um when mlw was on on tuesday nights was trying to help james out by live tweeting and <laughs> things like that so I was yeah. watching that for a little bit um but yeah there's a so mondays and tuesdays are basically my free night so we either catch up on like the dvr or usually we end up watching like gcw or something from the indies and now it will probably be catching up on g1 <laughs> will probably be what happens those nights <laughs> are you worried that ROH kind of just goes by the wayside a little bit. Uh, yes. I well, at, at first I wasn't because a lot of people started the dark comparisons, and I I was somebody who watched dark, and p- mostly because I was timing women's matches, but and also because I there were people a lot of times they would book indie talent from that I knew from around the area. Yeah. yeah. So like I'm like okay, I want to you know I want to see these people, or they'd book indie talent that I've seen in GCW or uh, Prestige or Defy or whatever. Um, and so. I do like that ROH still uses that as a vehicle for indie talent because they've got, there's only so many places that they can go and be so like, of course there's a ton of streaming, but you can't stream to everything and yeah. people don't have that kind of budget. So I do like that. They do still do some of that. And they brought over some of the people from Dino, I mean, from elevation and dark uh, that were on there and kind of give them a place. And they still put in like, like you have to, I was like, you can't have ROH and like not have the castle. Like you have to have him. You've got to have Shane Taylor. Um, I personally, one of the big things I really like about it is the work horsemen get featured a, a bit more mm-hmm. there. Um, I've known those guys for a really long time. They were in my, they were both in my indie promotion. Uh, Anthony Henry was my, I was the PW, PWX champion for a year. And then like he wrestled. That's how I got to really know like Tommaso Ciampa. They had a, an amazing uh trilogy of matches in 2016 i think it was 2017 uh and then jd drake i've been i've known him forever too and so i um really glad to see them getting some love and they seem to um tony seems to really like them a lot so i so yeah it it's just it seemed like at, it started off really hot and then it was like oh collision is here so I'm going to now collision early. It kind of reminds me like that energy and that effort and focus that they put on collision is kind of how ROH was. And now it's like ROH, like he's got to start like delegating and (laughs) some stuff and figuring out like who he's going to maybe like help him with storylines and things like that. Because the, like Athena is the only person who has a regular story. Like Claudio's hardly ever there. The Lucha Brothers, I half the time forget their tag team champions because they <laughs> they they and they were there like one time in the last. They probably few weeks. forget half the time too. Yeah, and they were on there like a few weeks ago, and it was them, Vikingo and Commander versus Work Horseman Shane Taylor and Gringo Loco, and it was an amazing match. But like, it wasn't even for like the tag titles weren't even involved. Like mm-hmm. they were just. It was like a dream match type of thing, which I think Tony kind of likes ROH because he can just do whatever he wants. He doesn't have advertisers telling him what to do. So he can put four women's matches on there if he feels yeah. like it. <laughs> and sometimes they still only get like three minutes, but you know. <laughs> but here's another thing in, I guess in, in, in a sense, this is okay if you watch both products. And I'm sure most people who watch ROH are also watching AW. Yeah. Which is, if there's an act that is going over bonkers in ROH, they're just gonna that act is probably just gonna be brought up. 
to AEW. Right. Like if they find a, a spot for Athena's character in AEW, uh, I they should bring her up because she's yeah. been great. Um, but at the same time, when you do that, then you take something from ROH, which may give an opportunity to somebody else. So th there may be some back and forth there that could be kind of cool. But yeah, as we've I seen from WWE, it doesn't always work out, you know, fantastically. Right. And I think it's also there are only 20 episodes in on ROH. And so they're still trying to build like especially build their women's their women's division like they're building it around Athena and Athena should be on like if they're going to let if Claudio and Lucha Brothers and um, you know, if they can all like go back and forth, there's no reason Athena can't do that because Sky Blue is she does both. She's been back and forth. Um, they've had um like they've had some other talent kind of cross back and forth so they're trying to build this like the, especially the women's division like so kiera hogan is down there diamante has gone back and forth um leila hirsch just came back and she says she's an roh to say so it sounds like she's gonna be down there too so like i feel like before like i don't want them to make athena stay there and just kind of like hamper her there but on the other hand like they've kind of made her a cornerstone and i feel like they have to build the division up more before so even if athena drops the title on friday to willow which i can't really tell what they're doing like then you have but willow you know you don't want to risk her being off of tv and mm -hmm. then people kind of forget like for some people maybe she is enough that they would subscribe to roh so they can see her every week um but so i just i think that's because they're so early and what's happening like i feel like they've got to build out they've got to flesh out their divisions a little bit more before they just take people away <laughs> That makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, all right. So let's talk a little bit about the show that you do with okay. Mel uh, on uh, Sundays. You are now you you both have been doing this for over a year now. Mm -hmm. What I don't know what your previous podcasting experience was before doing this, but is there anything that you've kind of learned in this process about the art of, of speaking into a microphone or about uh, wrestling or about kind of uh, content creation, like because you know it was just an experiment for us, right? We were it was yeah. like we don't really have a uh, space for an audio show in the feed, but hey, we have this YouTube channel, yeah. And every you know, there's so many millions of video. I mean, it's a, a <laughs> video going up on YouTube every day. Like, let's do it. Yeah. Let's see if we can right. get an audience. And you know, there are people in our Discord, you know, who are like, oh. I got to be there watching live with them because, you know, I, you know, that, that that's the show that I support. So I think it's been really cool. Now, yeah. you know, we can, we, if we can get those, you know, those friends to tell their friends to come yeah. in, then, then <laughs> exactly. we'll really be cooking. But right. how's, I, I guess a, a better question is how has the experience been for you? And like, what, what have you enjoyed about it? This is, so I had very limited experience uh, with podcasting. Uh, one of my friends who is in, that we were going to indie shows with, uh, he had uh, a podcast and sometimes we would do uh, like he would usually just interview some of the wrestlers and things like that. But then he would have um, when they would have their big turn they had a big two night tournament that they would do. And they would um, because they lived in South Carolina, they would have um they would stay at a hotel. And so a couple of times we just went over to the hotel after the show and we would like record a show about what we just saw. And so like, I was a guest on that show quite a few times. And we basically just talked about our local wrestling promotion. Um, and then I had been like a guest here and there on a couple of things, but that was like, that's it. I was very limited. Um, I had never hosted anything before. I had no intention of ever being on YouTube. I thought if I had a podcast, it'd be audio only. I had zero plans. And then you were like, well, what about, you know, I had this idea <laughs> and I was like, well, and I was like really hesitant. I was like, do I realize like, I don't really want to be on camera and I'm really good at writing. I mean, and I was just like, I would, I was very hesitant. And then I was yeah. like, you know what? I'm just going to say yes and we'll see what happens. And I was like, maybe I try it and I don't like it. And you know, that's it. And then so to back up what you're just saying, I was very hesitant to go on video too, because with, with audio, there's a there, there's a layer, there's a shield for yeah, you. Exactly. And with video, it's like, oh man, like this just opens me up in a different way. Yes. It's yeah. but it's also where stuff is going. Mm -hmm. Like it's where media is going. It's where right. uh, content creation is going. So you kind of have to be open to it. 
-hmm. because that's what the the viewers and the and the people who engage with you kind of expect now. So right. it's yeah. it's it you know it took me a little while and. You know, I I'm I'm still not going to really watch myself back on video, but yeah, you know, I think I've gotten a lot more used to it than than I expected myself to. For yeah, sure. and I got used to it faster than I thought I would. Um, and I don't know if it's just because, um, because like it, part of it, I think, is just because it's um because Mel and I have so much in common, and so I just sometimes forget that we're on camera and I just feel like I'm talking to somebody, yeah. and now we have like our own. We've got a few people who watch every single week. And so they're in the comments. And sometimes it feels like we're just all having a big discussion together. About... Shout, shout, we can shout them out. <laughs> yeah. Dazza. Yeah. Shout and, out Dazza. Shout out yeah, Brad. Uh huh. And Nikki is there. Uh, we have uh, Gray is there every week. We have people who pop in and out. Uh, we have a few people who I don't know what their real names are. I just know their, <laughs> their YouTube their name. Names, yeah. And so they'll pop in every couple of weeks or every week and they'll just pop in. And so, yeah, so it's really nice. And so shout out to all of them for coming, especially, uh, I know football season will be restarting and we're on at the same time. <laughs> so people are watching football. That's okay. Cause I have football on in the background. Um, I, I have, I always have baseball on usually <laughs> in the background too. Um, and it's usually on. So, um, but yeah, so I think maybe that's probably another reason that we that I got more comfortable with it quickly, more quickly than I expected, just because uh, we do have people who listen to us. Um, we have people who seek us out every week or they plan it in their schedules to to come hang out with us, with us which I think is really, really cool. Um, but yeah, so I've learned a lot because I had no idea. And then I've learned that like. I had a great microphone who that constantly falls off of its stand and tries <laughs> to fight me. And so it just became, and it came a bit <laughs> with our regulars that uh, my microphone was that we were going to have feud of the year and they were going to submit me to <laughs> wrestling observer for feud of the year <laughs> with my microphone. And so, um, but yeah, so I know you learned to kind of um, just go with the flow and like Mel and I get along really well even when we have differing opinions mm -hmm. like we can both listen to each other we don't scream at each other we don't do and actually we did have uh somebody who was said they were like it's really refreshing that you guys don't yell at each other like you just have a conversation <laughs> and about everything and so um so yeah it was it's I've really enjoyed it a lot more than I thought and it's been um it's something I still look forward to to doing every single week so for the people who are listening or watching on the Patreon, they may not even know that we have this show. Yeah. And, you know, just go to the YouTube channel, uh, the YouTube for those watching it, the, the link is below, but, or you can just search uh, fight game media in, in YouTube. Um, and hopefully based off of this, we'll get some of the Patreon folks to kind of check in and, and see, and they don't, yeah. you know, it's, it's not part of the paid thing, but um, it is a, a very regular show. I think you've only veered off of the Sunday like a couple of times. And yeah, it's only just, just because of you guys had stuff going on. Yeah. So. Yeah. So we yeah. So we ended that having a set time has really helped us like that was when you recommended us doing that. That was a really I think that definitely has helped us, especially on like pay-per-view days, because so now we have the pre-pre show that we do yeah, and we that's, turn that's it. It's something that gimmick out there. Yeah, we love the pre-pre show. And so we usually we preview uh, a, we preview the AEW pay-per-views before they come in. Um, we've been we'll do like we did a little mini preview of the first two days of G1, uh, the first four blocks and gave our predictions and um yeah so we really enjoy and then we try to ha you know we've have guests come in um with us and so we've love having our honorary broads come on and and chat with us and getting to know other people in the network which is really cool no i i'm really happy that we have the show um you know it's it, i'm starting to see more women come into the wrestling space which is great i think fightful does a really good job mm -hmm. of bringing in women who are wrestling fans and you know from a from a people of color perspective too i'm starting to see more people of color come into this space yeah which is i think it's fantastic yeah we, we need more voices we need more opinions Absolutely. we can't have the same ones of of mm -hmm. everybody you know, it just doesn't it's not as fun that way so um i you know i really appreciate both of you doing this because you. you know we'll we'll figure out you know we haven't really figured out the the best way to sort of like monetize because mo monetization in youtube is it's really the the 
the the major major channels can can do some really good monetization and yeah. the other you know, other channels are just sort of like it's just kind of like tokens of of hard work and such so um you know we're trying to figure out different ways to do that but if you are watching uh the power bombshells and you want to support mel and, and sam shoot them a super chat because those super yes. chats will just send them to to them so you know yeah, uh, it, that. It, that, that would just go directly to them uh so i guess uh to wrap this thing up i have two sh two questions okay. you know we don't have to spend a whole long uh segment on on them uh really quick kind of thoughts here but uh do you have a favorite match of all time favorite pro wrestling match of all time yeah <laughs> yeah that's such a Sometimes that's such a daunting question. <laughs> and it does. Um, I would say probably because I knew you were gonna ask this because I watched the other two mm -hmm. <laughs> interviews. And plus I know it's funny because Sunday I had actually mentioned to Mel, I was like, I need to watch those those two interviews because I was like, I really wanna see like because I was like to get to know you know the people that yeah. i'm on this thing with and then she was like aren't you supposed to be on it soon and i was like if we can ever get it figured out and then the next day you're like <laughs> hey are you available so it worked out and so i was already watching but i guess i would probably say my favorite match of all time is probably omega okada four um i think the reason part of that i mean i just love that whole series i think that was the first time that i saw what wrestling could be as somebody who watched a lot of wwe and mm -hmm. wwf and realized like started like friends were like telling me about bullet club and they were telling me about kenny omega and things like this and there and i would hear the name okada and like because I didn't tape trade, like I didn't even know that was a thing or how to even go about that. And so then I had a friend who was like, well, I have a New Japan subscription and she let me use her login. And so I would watch some things and then I ended up just subscribing for myself. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and so, yeah, I think it's, those... it's, it just gets cheaper too. like all of a yeah. sudden I'm like, yeah. wow, I'm only paying like $7 for this thing now. It's right. Like, 10 exactly. bucks, like three years ago. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And so, but yeah, so I think those matches, I just realized I'm like, wow, I was like, there's actually this whole type of wrestling outside of anything I've ever seen before. And it's so good. And I watched them live and like i love watch i mean it sucks getting up really early in the morning to watch wrestle kingdom yeah. but it's such a fun experience to be able to watch with people because like we would be like my sister and i would watch it our friends sometimes in the group chat depends on like because one of my one of my friends is a teacher so sometimes he would not be able to join us but like we so we would be in the group text or i would be watching on Twitter and there'd be people from all over the world watching this stuff together, which is sometimes wrestling is like, I forget how like super niche it is, but then mm -hmm. on the other hand, there's so many. And that, I guess that's one of the good things about Twitter is like all these people can experience this thing together. And we're all watching like this incredible match. Like I could still like one of the craziest things to me is the time that Okada took off his long boys and had <laughs> the trucks back on and like Twitter lost its mind because you could see Okada's legs. And we were like, Oh my God, we were like, we know what this means. <laughs> so, yeah. But so I would probably say, I, yeah, I love that whole series, but probably o Omega Okada four, I'd probably say is my favorite match. It's a great one. It's definitely a great one. Uh, all right. And then, you know, that this one's coming too, which is, <laughs> Outside of wrestling, and then I also I'll say outside of baseball. <laughs> yeah. Uh, give me something that you would recommend to folks that you really enjoy. Oh wow, that's a really good question. Um, outside of wrestling and baseball, um, I had an answer to this and apparently forgot what it was. I apparently should have written it down. <laughs> it <laughs> but, could be television or movie or yeah, music television. Or podcast it's funny. Or book. Actually, it's funny that you mentioned this because so <laughs> my I still watch. Grey's Anatomy. I have watched every single episode. I have watched every single season. And I went on Mike and JD's. Well, it was back when it was Brace for Impact. Yeah. And they were like, I can't believe that you still watch that. And we were talking <laughs> about Patrick Dempsey. And I was like, no, his character was killed a long time ago. <laughs> so they were telling me, they were like, you have to watch Can't Buy Me Love because I need you to yes. see like how cheesy it is. I need your reaction. And like, I kept thinking like, I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch it. And then I completely forgot about it. And then I was like, the other when he, i heard you talking to mike and i was like mike is the one yes yeah. <laughs> like you need to watch it so i was like i think it's on amazon prime i think 
he uh-huh. said so i need to go find that but yeah so that's yeah i still watch like and it's funny because keela i know is a general hospital fan. Yeah. i have watched general hospital for a really long time and i was like i guess that kind of works as a wrestling fan because there's so much soap opera-esque yeah. things that happen in it so it kind of makes sense like my mom like that's because my mom watched general house like i used to watch when i was growing up i used to watch all my children and would like to live with her we still watch we all still watch general hospital every day it's usually it's dvr'd and so sometimes sometimes we just binge it and watch a few at a time sometimes nikki and i will watch it like every you know we'll watch it and get caught up and like talk to my mom about it and so and i was like well and that's why i try to explain to her and i'm like well you know how this is a soap opera i was like well wrestling is kind of that mm-hmm. with with fighting <laughs> and she's mm-hmm. like it's so violent how can you watch it and i'm like i don't i, I just enjoy it <laughs> I, I i definitely had my uh, all my children runs when I was uh, <laughs> younger out of school during the summer for sure. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. So poppers are, I mean, it's just, it's just very easy just to pick up and, and watch. Is. And you may ask some questions like, who's this again? Was that? Yeah. Person? But then they just drop you right into whatever. Yeah, the storylines so are so easy to follow. They- like yeah and then they'll and then sometimes i'll forget because then they'll repeat the same thing and i'm like oh this must be for people who miss the day then they can hear like what they miss and yeah it's repetitive and like they'll bring back and sometimes because general hospital is in the middle of its 60th season and so now they're bringing back things from like previous like back in the day some of it was like either when i was not watching or i was like really young and then i'm like trying to remember (laughs) things and i'm like oh yeah and like they brought in a character from all my children last week um from and he still looks exactly the same and except just older now <laughs> so it was it's yeah i was like so that is something i still watch i mean probably don't recommend that for most people but <laughs> that's still the, what i watch and then i watch a lot of um i watch a lot of true crime stuff and i think it's because i grew up watching 2020 uh-huh. and so like <laughs> we used to watch that type what's of the, what's the best true crime thing you've seen uh, the best I watched like I got we were on a snapped kick for a really long time and then now we watch like forensic files and we watch a lot of like the people magazine investigates um, and find out about like well, some of it is old cases we'd never heard of and then some of it is like more current cases mm-hmm. and so watch a lot of that I have a ton of like datelines on my DVR. like I probably have like 20 datelines on my TV right I'm on my DVR right now because I'm so behind on them but yeah so some nights we'll just be like instead of watching wrestling we're just gonna watch murder shows <laughs> <laughs> I I did finish uh, Mayor of East Town on HBO which I heard that was really good I never sort of in- a true detective like episodic miniseries uh and i thought i thought it was really good yeah yes oh yeah so speaking yeah speaking of hbo and stuff like that we are big righteous gemstone fans uh, yeah that's one that i keep hearing good things about that <laughs> I, I have not watched yeah it. we binged i think we binged the whole we binged the first season like right before season two started we actually had some friends who were extras in season two because season they had was it season two that they had like a because like because it takes place in the south it takes place in south carolina and so there's a lot of southern things in there mm-hmm. so like they focused on like wrestling they had like wrestlers in there and uh stuff like that and so this year they've got like the monster they've done some stuff with like monster trucks and things like that so it's it's very satirical um if you don't like people making fun of religion especially baptists and christians then the show is not for you <laughs> because there's a lot of that there uh there's a lot of um just i don't know i love the show it's really funny i'm a huge dana mcbride fan um and then we also are sorry we've been watching because we watched sex in the city and so mm-hmm. we we were not sure if we were gonna watch the new spinoff and then we ended up watching like a few episodes and then it started kind of getting its feet finally and this season has been a lot funnier than i expected i think because the first one dealt a lot with death mm. and so this one has been kind of coming out of that and it's a lot funnier than i expected the season to be like i just was not expecting to laugh as much at, as i did at that so those are the two probably most current things that we're watching and we make sure like on sunday nights that's what because uh and just like that comes on on thursday night so we save it for sunday we watch that and then we watch righteous gemstones and so that's something there you that go. definitely, yeah. <laughs> so I recommend both of those. <laughs> well, what you should do is every you got you and Mel put the show up about at least twenty four hours in advance. Usually, maybe yeah. usually more than twenty four hours yeah. in advance. So, if you go to the YouTube page and you click the show, you can actually 
select uh, to be notified when Mel and, and uh, Sam go live. So uh, if you don't want to forget, that's a good way to make sure you get your little notification about when they start the show. But also, it's just the same time every week, which is Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. So uh, Power Bombshells, check out uh, Sam and Mel. And we're going to bring Mel on and, and do this. Uh, probably break it up a little bit. Uh, yeah. Bring in some some more folks before I get to Mel. I told I keep telling Paul Fontaine he's going last because I talked <laughs> I talked to him so much. Like, what, what am I going to do? Like, I just so but, but he, he, maybe he'll be the he'll clean up the whole thing. There we um, go. <laughs> so Sam Shipman, thanks a bunch for doing this. Hopefully you. folks have learned a little bit about you. Where can they follow you on Twitter? Uh, it is at Samantha underscore one seven one three. And then, of course, we're on Power Bombshells is on Twitter at Power Bombshells. We're on Instagram with that as well. We we already had one, but then we were like, just in case Twitter, Twitter disappears. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're over there we have a small presence over there we're trying to get better about posting more mel posted some but pictures there's from, there's from your uh, there's your threads account there right yeah there. that is true yeah so we yeah we've got some i've been trying to post some of my local indie stuff there um as well and then mel got her forbidden door stuff in over there so we're trying to utilize that some more and get some some more content over there for people awesome all right for sam i'm double g we will see you when we see you peace out <laughs>